Hello, welcome back to another video. I just finished gathering all the components needed to make this airsoft. The bench is crowded with all these parts, so let me quickly go through what I have on the bench. All these parts have been 3D printed and painted for a more realistic gun appearance, I guess. They are all made out of PLA, and this here is around 100 hours worth of 3D printing. You do need a couple of other components, uh, and uh, this is a reinforcing threaded rod. You also need a very specific airsoft barrel. This one was around uh, $15, I believe. The caliber ball pellets, the BBs or the ammunition, a bicycle pump, the main spring, PVC piping, metal tubing, even more springs, and a whole lot of nuts and bolts. It's a, it's a substantial project and a job well done to this guy, Sam Logan, he is the brain behind this. He even made a beautiful written article on Instructables of how you put all this together and he even released the 3D printing files completely for free. What's up next is we're gonna make the shoulder rest going from this part to your shoulder using the metal piping and it's pretty heavy, I like it because we're gonna use the threaded rod, uh, the metal piping, the outer barrel, uh, there, there's gonna be a lot of heavy parts to it so it's gonna feel realistic and I really like that. Going deep into the woods for this one. Someone saw you with this, you will get the police calling you, man. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the beast. That's the sound of the police. This is the perfect location to try for the first time the fully working through the printed airsoft rifle. I am too excited. Before we start shooting, I want to take a minute and explain how this 3D printed airsoft functions because it wasn't quite as easy as I showed you in the video where I just assembled the entire thing and it magically worked. It was a lot of unscrewing, taking apart and reassembling before I got this working reliably. The magazine holds the BBs, small spheres small spheres that is the ammunition and it's constantly pushed up by a rubber band inside the magazine to something called the hop-up bucking inside the gun. The BBs are basically being placed in queue for the hop-up bucking, it's a resting place before the BB gets shot out of the barrel. Right before the hop-up we have a modified bicycle pump and so imagine you have one of those portable bicycle pumps, you pull back and then push forward to have all this air come out. We have the exact same thing going on here. Pushing this lever or lever back will compress the spring so we are currently in the state where we have the bicycle pump pulled all the way back. Now we have the trigger box latch this into place so we can push the bicycle pump forward and the pump will still be compressed. And now all we have to do is use the trigger to have that latch going down and release that spring and push the, and push the bicycle pump forward with all the force of the compressed spring. And all that fast moving air is going through the hop-up bucking, catching one of the spheres and pushing it out the barrel at significant speeds. 
No, it's not as heavy as the real rifle, obviously, but I'll put the weight right here. It does have some heft to it. It does feel authentic. It looks really cool. It doesn't look like a toy. The weathering I did, I, I used the same technique as on the uh, T-Rex skeleton. I just used some water and dirt from the backyard. I brought some cans with... Okay, I brought some cans with me and it's probably the most standard thing to shoot at but I wonder how accurate it will be. Do we hit three or four of these in a row or just the one with the lucky shot? I don't know. And I wonder if it will actually penetrate the aluminiums. I mean, it's on good dents but it doesn't go through. Now, uh, now let's see if we can hit them from a greater distance than one inch. Starting off at a laughable five meters, but I'm thinking at least one popped. Gotta stay positive. That was close. Oh, I hit, oh, I hit it again. I was aiming for the left one. Oh, and that's one magazine. What's that, like seven? Reloading the magazine is no more than 30 seconds. You will always be left with a couple of BBs in the magazine. It's the distance between the hop-up and the magazine. You can't push the BBs all the way up. But all you have to do is take some fresh BBs and put them in and use your fingernail to push them down. And I think it holds around 13, 14 BBs. So you should have at least eight, nine BBs to your disposal when shooting. And we are all set to go again. Nice one. Oh my gosh. This is incredible. I gotta say, the aim is straight on. I'm looking through this portion here, and it's it's right in the middle, and I hit all three, all four in a row, I believe. And no, it, it doesn't puncture the uh, the metal. There are the annihilated cans. I'm on the ground over here. Now let's move back all the way somewhere here. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen meters, más o menos. By sheer coincidence. Bam! That's what I'm talking about. I mean, first try. <laughs> That is it. Thank you very much for watching and remember this is a toy. It cannot kill. It will sting, but it cannot kill. And before I go, I'll make sure to go on a scavenger hunt for BBs. You don't want to leave that in nature. This one easily breaks top five most rewarding projects I've ever done. I feel like it was a great learning experience and it was a lot of fun to make. I can't wait to hang this on the wall and use it on occasion. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. Leave a like if you did and uh, I'll see you again very soon. Have an awesome day. Bye.